This video is brought to you by HubSpot. If you're a software developer looking for a job right now, I know that it can feel hopeless. Every single job posting gets flooded with hundreds, sometimes thousands of applications within hours. Getting noticed in this market feels like trying to scream in a crowded stadium. But here's the thing. I'm gonna show you three specific ways to actually stand out and get that callback. And the callback is crucial because that's your foot in the door. That's what leads to interviews and ultimately the job that you want. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Steve Wynn. I quit my nearly 20 year career at Amazon as a principal software engineer to make content to help people with their tech careers. If you want more from me, sign up for my weekly newsletter or join my discord of over 7,500 ambitious tech professionals. We have advice and resume review forums and a killer accountability channel. Links for both are in the description. Before I get into my first point, I need to explain a critical concept to you. Here's a bowl of Reese's Pieces. Each one represents a candidate applying for the same job as you. They all have computer science degrees. They all know Python, JavaScript, and React. They're all leak code machines. They've all built the same side projects. They're all passionate about technology and solving complex problems. When a hiring manager or recruiter looks at the sea of candidates, their eyes glaze over. Every candidate starts to look the same. The human brain literally can't process this many similar options effectively. It's a psychological phenomenon called choice paralysis. Let's see what we've got here. These brown ones know React, these yellow ones know Angular, and these orange ones, these orange ones put full stack developer in their bio because they've successfully ran NPM install on a backend repository. But watch what happens when I add this. Your eye is immediately drawn to it, wasn't it? That's because this m and is an outlier. It's not necessarily better than the other candy. It's just distinctly different in one specific way. This is exactly what you need to do with your application. And that's my first point. You need to become an outlier on at least one dimension that matters. And I don't just mean being better. I mean being distinctly different in a way that makes you immediately noticeable. The good news is you don't have to be an outlier in every dimension. You don't need to be the best at everything. You just need to be notably different in one meaningful way. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you three specific strategies to make yourself stand out like this blue m and Ways to become an outlier that will get you noticed by recruiters and hiring managers, even in this competitive market. A lot of developers are worried that AI is going to replace them. But here's the thing. AI isn't there yet. Instead, the winning move is to use AI to uplevel. That's why I've teamed up with HubSpot to provide all of my viewers with a comprehensive guide on learning how to code with ChatGPT. The best part? It's completely free. This isn't just another basic coding tutorial. Inside, you'll learn how to use AI as your personal supercharged coding tutor, a step-by-step -step roadmap to accelerate mastery, my favorite part, practical strategies to avoid common AI learning pitfalls, of which there are so, so many, and real-world applications to accelerate your progress. In a world where people copying and pasting code blindly from LLMs is the norm, the people that have true understanding of fundamental concepts of their craft are well on their way to becoming outliers. Using tools like ChatGPT to accelerate your learning is the real power move. Just click on the link in the description to download your free copy. Thanks again to HubSpot for sponsoring today's video. Before I get into my second point, let's talk about how people commonly go about differentiating themselves. This is Alice, Bob, and Charlie. All three are early career and they don't have a ton of work experience. Alice has decided to do a bunch of side projects. She's created a to-do app, a weather app, and a toy e-commerce website. She's going to be doing tutorials and side projects until she gets a job. This is Bob. He's proficient in Python, JavaScript, React, Node, Docker, AWS, and machine learning technologies. He's gonna be learning new languages and frameworks until he gets a new job. And this is Charlie. Charlie's got certificates. AWS certified cloud practitioner, CompTIA A+, Google IT support, you name it, he's got the certificate for it. He's gonna keep collecting certificates until he gets a job. Of these three people, Alice, Bob, and Charlie, who's gonna get a job faster? The answer is, in today's competitive job market, none of them are going to get a job faster than any of the others. And that's my second point. You can't differentiate yourself from others if you only do things that everybody else does. Let me show you why. Alice's projects, there are thousands of to-do apps built from the same tutorials. Bob's learning of languages and frameworks, that's the same list of technologies everybody else has on their resumes. Charlie's certificates, 
that are the standard certificates everyone gets when they Google best tech certifications. See what's happening here? They're all working incredibly hard at being identical to everyone else. Alice is trying to be slightly more orange. Bob is trying to be slightly more knowledgeable yellow. Charlie is trying to be slightly more certified brown Reese's Pieces. But when a hiring manager has hundreds of applications to go through, they aren't going to notice that someone is 5% more colorful than others. People are always asking me what type of side projects to do, what certifications to get, what languages they should learn, whether they should learn blockchain or learn AI. And you know what? These aren't bad questions. They're just the wrong questions. The real question isn't what should I learn next? It's how can I fundamentally be different from everyone else? And that brings me to my next point. Let me show you how to think about standing out that doesn't just lump you in with everybody else. It's actually surprisingly simple. But I hope you understand at this point that simply knowing something isn't differentiating. Knowledge, especially today with books, podcasts, blog posts, and YouTube, is out there for everybody to consume. And you don't have to be so much of an expert that you can write an entire book on a subject. The trick is my final point, which is that you only have to be an outlier on a single dimension. And there are a lot of dimensions out there. I'll give you a list of three of them right now. The first one is depth. Pick a very specific technical topic within a broader technology. Most people try to go broad and learn a bunch of different disconnected things, but it's actually really rare when somebody goes deep. But when I say deep, I mean you need to go really deep. Let me give you some examples. Instead of I know Redis or even I'm good at Redis pub sub patterns, become knowledgeable on Redis key space notifications for specific invalidation patterns in microsurface architectures with high throughput requirements. Instead of, I know Kubernetes, or even, I know Kubernetes networking, if you understand the intricacies of Kubernetes network policies for zero trust multi-tenant clusters with dynamic policy generation, that would make you stand out. Instead of, I know GraphQL, or even, I'm good at GraphQL subscriptions, become knowledgeable of implementing cursor-based real-time pagination in GraphQL subscriptions with custom directives for handling back pressure in high-scale applications. Instead of, I know Postgres, or even, I'm familiar with Postgres indexing, an outlier would say they have an understanding of partial indexes for time series in IoT applications with billions of daily data points. Instead of, I'm familiar with accessibility, or even, I understand ARIA patterns, become an expert on building accessible real-time data visualizations for users with different types of color blindness, like with financial application use cases. See how specific these are? Most people would say, that's too niche, and that's exactly the point. No company wants someone who knows Postgres. They want a person who has spent the time to go really deep, because nobody really goes deep. So how do you find your deep specialty? Here's the secret. One of the easiest ways to become an expert is to master something that just came out recently. Watch the release notes of technologies you already use. When a new major feature drops, that's your opportunity. Nobody's an expert yet. There's no established best practices. The documentation is usually minimal. If you dive deep right when a feature is released, you can become the expert while everyone else is still figuring out the basics. For example, when React server components first came out, or when Postgres introduced JSON path operators, or when Redis added client-side caching, these were perfect moments to develop deep expertise. While most people wait for tutorials and best practices to emerge, you could be the one creating them. Once you've identified your area, it's time to do original research. You can build proof of concepts that push the boundaries. Features are usually created because there were existing deficiencies and rough spots. What were those rough spots? You can also figure out which companies likely had issues with prior versions. Those companies are probably eager to adopt these new features, but they need to understand the migration path the gotchas, and the real-world performance implications. That's where your expertise becomes incredibly valuable. This type of deep work is so much better than going broad and makes you truly stand out. Number two, recruiter optimization. Most people focus all of their energy on sending out applications and polishing their resume, but they're missing a huge opportunity making themselves discoverable to recruiters. And the ridiculous thing is, nobody is really doing it. Think about it, when a recruiter has to fill a role, they're not just posting a job and waiting. They're actively searching on LinkedIn for candidates. What does your LinkedIn profile look like? 
Are you making it easy for people to reach out to you for opportunities? Have your DMs open. Make your email visible. Write a profile summary that actually explains what types of roles you're interested in and what your expertise is. Most importantly, be active. Share your technical discoveries. Comment in industry posts. Write about what you're learning. This activity makes your profile show up higher in recruiter searches. What should you write about? How about the stuff that you're learning while you're going deep on a particular topic? So many people get jobs over LinkedIn nowadays. A great LinkedIn profile is about making it obvious to recruiters why they should reach out to you specifically. Most people aren't doing LinkedIn right. Think about it this way. If most people are neglecting their LinkedIn presence, then simply having a well-crafted active profile already makes you an outlier. Just like that blue M&M, you'll stand out not because you're doing something incredibly difficult, but because you're doing something different from what everyone else is doing. Since we're on the topic of LinkedIn, here's dimension 2.5. Leveraging your network, including people you haven't met yet. When applying to a company, first check LinkedIn for any connections who work there. Having them submit a referral for you is the simplest way to stand out. Most candidates just submit cold applications. But here's where it gets interesting. Even if you don't know anyone, reach out to engineers on the team that's hiring. Show genuine interest in their work. Ask about their team's challenges and what they're building. And you can also ask for advice on the hiring process. Now, you might worry that this could hurt your chances. But remember, you're not getting any callbacks anyways from cold applications. At worst, they'll ignore you. At best, they'll help you, maybe even with a referral. I've seen countless people land jobs this way just by being curious and professional in their outreach. Plus, many companies offer referral bonuses so the employees are actually incentivized to help you. If your application goes silent, your new contact can check in on its status. So low risk approach with a potentially huge upside. Most people build side projects that live and die on their GitHub profile another to-do app that exactly zero people will ever use. But imagine being the candidate who can say, I built and shipped an app that real people actually use. Let me give you a statistic. Did you know that most podcasts don't make it past episode three? Only a tiny fraction ever reach 20 episodes. That means if you just make it to 20 episodes, you're an outlier. Side projects are exactly the same. Most people quit way too early. They never launch, they never see their first user, they never make a dollar. One dollar makes you an outlier. Think about that. And here's the thing, it's never been easier to ship something real. With AI tools like ChatGPT, you can move faster than ever before. You can generate boilerplate code, debug issues, write documentation, even create marketing copy. Tools like Vercel make deployment a single click. If you're building a mobile app, don't just build it, release it on the App Store. If you're building a web app, don't just deploy it, get people to use it. Even if you just get 10 users, even if it's just one paying customer, that's infinitely more than zero. And I'm not saying that you need to build the next unicorn startup, though that would be super nice. The real value is that you're manufacturing real world experience that you don't have yet. Because here's what happens when you focus on real users. You have to learn all of the things that actually matter in a company setting. You have to think about error handling because real users will break things in ways that you've never expected. You have to care about performance because real users won't wait for slow load times. You have to write clear error messages because real users will get confused. You have to think about analytics because you need to understand how people are using your app. And even if you can get a few paying customers, now you're learning about pricing strategies, customer support, feature prioritization, things that make an interviewer's eyes light up in interviews. These are skills that most junior developers have never touched. Nobody is stopping you from getting this experience. You don't need permission. You don't even need a company to give you a chance. You can start building something real today. Remember, any company can find developers who can build to-do apps, but they're desperately looking for developers who understand what it takes to ship real products to real users. So that's three and a half concrete ways to become the blue M&M and exponentially increase the chances of getting noticed. If you found today's video helpful, none of it matters unless you do well on the full interview loop. You have to watch this video on how to exponentially increase your interview success rate. It's filled with tips and information on how to make your job search through to the last level, actually getting an offer.